Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're back on Brilliant.org. This is the challenge quiz level one for the basic mathematics warm-ups. Let's get going. Assuming the pattern continues, how many squares will be in figure five? Okay, we have figure one through four right here. Let me get my oops. Let me get my pen tool. So here we have you know one square, and then what's new? Well. We're, we're adding a square on each of the edges, right? And that's how we get figure two. So this is figure two is just gonna be one plus four. And figure three is the same thing. We're just adding one more square, tacking it on the end. And that, that appears to be the pattern. So figure three is gonna be one plus four plus four. Figure two, same thing. We're just adding one more at the end. So one plus four plus four plus four. And then what will figure 5 be? Well, figure 5, we're just going to add one more 4. And so what do we have? We have four 4s added together. And so this is going to be 1 plus 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 1 is 17. So 17 squares, I believe, is going to be our answer. Let's check it out. 17, submit. Awesome. Excellent work. Next problem. How many squares are in this image? Oh, okay, well we have our one main big square. We have our one main big square. Uh, we have these four smaller squares. Let me let me change colors whenever I outline these. We have our we have these four squares. So we have one, two, three. So so far we have five squares our main big one and then these four and then what do we have well we have this square in this middle just this green so this is five so let's write down what we have so far we have one our main big one plus the four corner ones plus the green one in the middle and then what else do we have well we have these smaller green ones as well we have this square one two, three, four. So it looks like this is another four that we've added. And this makes a total of 10. I, I hope I'm not missing any, but I feel like this is all the squares. So I'm gonna go with 10 as the answer. Let's see what we get. Excellent, 10 squares. Next problem. If seven cows need seven days to eat seven grass fields, how many days would it take five cows to eat five grass fields? So this is, this is curious. We have seven cows, and it takes seven days to eat, to eat seven fields. It's I before E, except after C, guys. That's why I do math and not English. <laughs> seven cows, seven days, seven fields. And we're curious about five cows. All right, well, before we go to five, let's think about one. How many fields would one cow eat? One cow would, in seven days, would eat one field, right? Because if seven cows ate seven fields in seven days, then it would take one cow the whole seven days to just eat one field. Yeah, that's, that's logical. And so how much, so five cows to eat five fields, five cows for five fields, well, this would also just be seven days. So the, the seven days stay constant, and then five cows will take seven days to eat five fields. So, so our answer here is seven. This is a problem that, you know, I feel like, I feel like it's easy to, to get messed up in a problem like this, but I would just take it slow, maintain your reason, stay logical, and Take it a step at a time, and you, you'll logically come to this answer, I, f I feel like. 
Let's go to on to the next problem. What is 2 to the 2 to the 2 to the 2 to the 0? All right, well, if you're new to exponents, anything to the 0 equals 1. So up here, well, let's maybe rewrite this. We have 2 to the 2 to the 2 to the 2 to the 0. So we have this very top exponent is what we have to do first. And this 2 to the 0 equals 1. So what, what does that mean? We have 2 to the 2 to the 2 to the 1. And 2 to the 1 is just 2. So that leads us with 2 to the 2 to the 2. And 2 to the 2 equals 4. And so that leads us with 2 to the 4. And what does 2 to the 4th mean? It just means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. So I'm saying 16 is our answer. Excellent. So <laughs> a little less than half got this right. And I imagine it's because people saw this 0 and immediately put 1 as the answer. But remember, with order of operations and all that stuff, we have to go step by step. And that's how we get to 16 as our answer. So, so be careful whenever you have problems like this. Don't, don't rush it. Don't see that zero in the exponent and say one. That's not good. So what do we have here? We have the square root of negative eight squared. So let's take a moment. Let's remember our order of operations. We have this PEMDAS numeric. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Uh, so what do we have? Well, first is parentheses. That's what P is for. And then we have exponents. So what do we have in parentheses? We have negative 8 squared. What is this equal? Well, this equals negative 8 times negative 8. And negative 8 times negative 8 equals a positive 64. As two negatives multiplied together make a positive. And so it's, whenever we finish out this equation, we're, we're rewriting what we know so far. We have square root of negative 8 squared, so square root of 64. And what is square root of 64? Well, square root of 64 is a positive. Well, it's actually technically, this is actually technically plus or minus 8. So I'm kind of confused here as if this is negative or positive. But no, no. It must be. I'm going to go with positive. It must be positive. So let's submit it. And I'm going to, let's go to discuss solutions. Let's see if anyone else mentioned what I just said. Here, here this guy solved it exactly how I did. Here, I think this, I think Thorstein explains it. Per definition, the principal square root of x squared is the positive value x not negative x. For example, square root of 100 to be 10, not negative 10. However, in an equation, the sum, the square root can both be positive and negative value of x. For instance, x squared equals 100, x could be 10 or negative 10. Because this problem doesn't consist of an equation, the correct answer is 8 and not negative 8. Okay, so this guy kind of explains it. He says the principal square root of x squared is the positive value and not the negative. And because this was not an equation, just a statement, uh, our answer is the positive, positive solution. So if you're curious about that, that's this, that, that guy's answer. I'm going to take him for what he said. And there we go. That was challenge quiz level one. I'll see you guys in the next video for the second level challenge quiz. Until next, guys. Until next time. Take care, everybody.